ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحديث هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار اما بعد my brothers and sisters in islam recently in recent months and, and this to be honest happens quite often around the year many of the people got very excited in regards to some movies that were released they got excited and they got happy about them and they gathered together to go and watch these movies they spoke about these movies and how they enjoyed them and what they saw of the of the scenes within these movies and they posted it online and on social media the sad reality about this that it was not just non muslims who did this but it was the muslims and what sad about this is that the muslim is not supposed to be like the non muslim in that which he does with his time in that which he enjoys himself with in how he spends his time the same thing that makes a non muslim happy isn't the same thing that makes the muslim happy or the thing that grieves the the non muslim isn't the same what grie- grieves the muslim and this is because of this great deen that the muslim has i ask is it possible that for one who believes in the rububiyah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah is the one who created him and created the heavens and the earth and everything around him and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who blessed him with his two eyes and his feet with which he walks and the hands with which he strikes and gave him everything in his life those that birthed him and those that he gave birth to can it be possible that such a person who believes in this and believes in that which the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam came with in regards to what he was informed about in regards to jannah whose expanse is more expansive than the heavens and the earth and a fire whose fuel is men and stones and he was informed about sirat that bridge yawm al qiyamah that every person has to cross more finer than a strand of hair more sharper than a sword if you fall off you fall off into the depths of hell that every single one of us has to cross this bridge people who believe in these things can they spend their time the same as those people who deny these things and don't believe in them in the first place no it's not possible and some of the people think that if i stay away from movies and if i stay away from these forms of entertainments then what is left for me inside this dunya then how about this great deen of al islam rather it's the non muslim who is at a loss because he doesn't have this great religion of islam that religion which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about it اليوم اكملت لكم دينكم this day i have completed or perfected your religion for you a religion which is from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands and prohibitions from allah not from a man like us not a way of life that was invented by men or nations that were created but rather it's from the creator a complete religion wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati and allah says i have completed for you or over you my blessing and my favor When Allah prohibits you from something it's a blessing for you not a loss for you wa raditu lakum al islam adin and Allah says I am pleased with Islam as a religion for you while the non muslims only have ways of life which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not pleased with these movies my brothers and sisters in Islam they are corruption and lead to corruption in many ways from the worst of things from these movies is looking upon the opposite gender which is haram for a man or a woman to look upon the opposite gender Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says inside the Quran qul lil mu'minina yaghuddu min absarihim tell the believing men to lower their gaze to avert their vision that they're not allowed to look upon those things which is haram for them wa yahfazu furujahum and let them guard over their private parts which shows you that a person who doesn't watch what he's looking at or looks upon these haram things upon in the movies and what is worse than them 
then he's not guarding over his private parts. And notice how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, guard, let them guard over their private parts. When we put a guard man or a security on a door, is he allowed to take a nap? Can he go to sleep? No, he has to be vigilant. And that is how we have to be vigilant in regards to our purity and our chastity and in regards to the private part. It's an active effort that has to be taken. You can't let your eyes wander wherever you want them to because that means you're not guarding. And something that is not guarded will be harmed. And that means a person who doesn't guard over his private parts and doesn't lower his gaze, he will fall into the haram of the private parts. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, That is more purifying for them. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, acquainted with that which they do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he then addresses the Muslim women. And he says, and tell the believing women that they too have to lower their vision, reduce their gaze. They're not allowed to look upon men with desire or look upon those things which is haram for them to look upon and all types of prohibited types of looking. And that they have to guard over their private parts. The Muslim woman is from the most precious thing on the face of the earth. And that, why, that is why she's the most highly guarded thing on the face of the earth. She guards over the self. No one can speak to her in the way that they want to speak to her. She doesn't allow it. She doesn't, she doesn't that allow that to happen to her in her school or her workplace. That a man, random man is going to come and speak to her in whatever way he wants. Or touch her or give her a high five or shake her hand. She will never allow this because she's a Muslim woman. And she has values and she has principles that cannot be crossed. But if she allows them to be crossed then she allows her chastity and her private parts to be attacked. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specifically says to the Muslim woman, وَلَا يُبْدِينَ زِينَتَهُنَّ إِلَّا مَا ظَهَرَ مِنْهَا And let her not display her adornments except for that which is outwardly apparent. Meaning that garment which she uses to cover herself, which is not an adornment in and of itself, that is the only thing that is outwardly apparent. As for the rest of our adorns, it should be covered. So my beloved sisters in Islam, it is not appropriate that you wear a garment thinking it, this is called hijab, but it doesn't cover your beauty and it lets out some of your hair or that you match the color of your makeup to the color of, your, of the scarf which you have put on top of your head. Rather, this can even fall into mockery sometimes. Something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he legislated that you cover your beauty in that same vein, in that same name, you use it to beautify yourself to indulge in all types of corruption or that she wears a garment which is tight around the legs or tight around the waist and, and tight around the hips so shows off, it shows off her beauty and she thinks that this is hijab and some of the people say well this is what she thinks is hijab this is her interpretation then why do you have to come and say these things because this is the deen of Allah which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam revealed and it must be clarified so that if there is a sincere sister and she really wants to wear the proper hijab, she can know what the proper hijab is. And then she can adorn herself or wear a, a proper hijab which isn't an adornment for herself. And what would you say about a person, so someone who rides a motorbike at very high speeds, we tell him that you should wear a helmet because if you crash you are going to die or you're going to be injured. And he points to the woolly hat on his head and he says, I don't have a helmet but look I'm trying my best, I've got a woolly hat. We say it doesn't fulfill the purpose of the helmet. The same way that these people, what they, what they think is hijab doesn't fulfill the purpose of hijab. In fact, it's the exact opposite. So it's a, it's a sincere advice to those people that would be sincere in this, that they cover themselves in a way which Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam legislated that you should cover yourself. Also know my brothers and sisters in Islam, I'd like to say a word about these so-called Islamic movies and Islamic dramas. Firstly, it's not permissible to call these things Islamic movies and Islamic dramas because the way in which that we, we do things inside our religion has to have existed and come from the Quran and the Sunnah and from the way of the Salaf. And before, even though they didn't have the technology for films and movies, they could have done plays. Did any of the Salaf ever do plays in order to give da'wah or to teach the people? No, they didn't. Rather, this is just another form of diversion, another form of deception toward the Muslims. That instead of picking up a book and learning about history, they think they will learn it from these movies or so-called Islamic movies, which can't be called Islamic movies. And then I asked, do they have women in these movies and these series? Do they have music in these movies and these series? So how did you ever think it was something good? 
Rather, it isn't something good and it's another form of corruption which has been sweetened to look like honey, but rather it is poison. My brothers and sisters in Islam, know that we should be a people who contemplate and that we reflect upon our situation. That if we were from amongst those people that get excited and get happy and look forward to these movies, we should recognize that the problem starts inside the heart. That because of some disease in the heart, we've turned towards movies rather than turning towards the Qur'an and the Sunnah. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, Ala wa inna fil jasadi mudra. Verily, inside the body is a lump of flesh. Ida salahat salah al jasadu kullu. If it is sound, then the whole body would be sound. If the heart is sound, the limbs and the eyes would never look upon these movies or walk towards these cinemas and watch these movies. Wa ida fasadat fasad al jasadu kullu. Ala wa hi al qalb. And if it is corrupted, then the whole body will be corrupted and Verily that this lump of flesh, it is the heart, my brothers and sisters. And from the great calamities that come from constantly looking at movies, is the fact that you stop finding that sweetness in looking inside the Qur'an and reading the Qur'an. Why? Because this person is in love with what he sees inside the movies. When he hears it and reads inside the Qur'an, Ahsanul Qasas, the best of stories, stories of prophets, doesn't take any benefit at all, doesn't move him, won't shed a tear when he reads about these lives and stories. Why he's shedding tears or she's shedding tears watching romance movies and action scenes? That's, that's all their heart moves to now because they corrupted their heart by constantly looking at these movies. Or that they come to the Salah. The Imam in the Salah is talking about Jannah and Nar, talking about Allah and his attributes. But his heart isn't present, his heart is still with the movie he left at home. This is how they slowly corrupt you and turn you away from your deen. You might see it small, but it's not small. Perhaps a youth was fully destroyed because the people around him thought it would be okay for him to watch movies. He watched the movies, he learned things, he, saw, he had different role models. He was exposed to Western corrupted ideologies which go against Islamic principles. He knew more about these celebrities than the um, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and the Prophets and the Companions عنهم. So this is a great calamity my brothers and sisters in Islam. So we should turn to our hearts and rectify it. And some of the people think that they will get happiness from these movies. Maybe you get a one second of happiness while you're watching it. As soon as the credits roll and the movie's over and you're left in the darkness of that room or darkness of that cinema with the people around you laughing and clapping your heart, you'll find in it sadness. There's no way you can ever find happiness in those things that turn you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَنْ عَرَدَ عَنَ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُمَ عِيشَةً ضَنْكَ Whomsoever turns away from my remembrance, then he will have a depressed life. So my brothers and sisters in Islam, turn to the light of the Qur'an and the Sunnah and turn away from wasting your time with these lowly movies. أقول قول هذا استغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفر الرحيم. Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah. Now I ask the question, my brothers and sisters in Islam, who is it that cannot bear to watch movies? Who is it from amongst the people that it's impossible for him to sit down for even a few moments to watch these corrupted movies? It is the man or a woman from amongst the ummah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam whose ambitions have gone beyond the sama, beyond the sky and towards the heavens. That man and that woman that looks upon the ummah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu and sees them in their time of weakness and he says, I will set out to do something about it. I will seek knowledge about the Quran and the Sunnah and teach it to the people after it has been clarified to myself. I will turn the tides for, for the Muslims through knowledge and da'wah and actions and ibadah, I will find for myself a seat in the thrones of Jannah. This person, he can't sit in front of the movie for five minutes. His heart whispers to him, what are you doing with your life? Impossible for him to sit down and watch the movies. 
He says to himself, I'm going to sit here and watch a guy acting, watch a woman acting about something that never happened or maybe it happened. So what? But how can I spend my time doing these things? He turns towards knowledge. He turns towards actions. He turns towards ibadah. And he makes for himself a way towards Allah and the home of the hereafter. So make your ambitions high. Oh brothers and sisters in Islam. Oh youth, turn towards knowledge within this locality or from the areas which you are from. Go to the Masajid, memorize the Quran, learn its understanding, memorize the Hadith, learn its understanding. Turn towards light, don't turn towards darkness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will enrich your life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you happiness and you will become from the leaders of the muttaqun, the leaders of those people who are conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my brothers and sisters in Islam, this is upon you, O youth, that you take a step away from these things that distract you. You make yourself distinct from the rest of the people in how you spend your time and in how you enjoy yourself. Inna allaha wa malaikatuhu yusalluna ala nabi Ya ayyuha alladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ala azwajih wa dhurriyatih kama sallayta ala ali ibrahim wa barik ala muhammad wa ala azwajih wa dhurriyatih kama barakta ala ali ibrahim innaka hamidun majid Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi alakhirati hasana wa qina azab al-nar ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا إننا آمنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وقنا عذاب النار اللهم صل وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين